Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel Diecast Iron Man 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the Hot Toys 20th Anniversary exclusive Iron Man Mark 7, the Midas armor. Technically, it's the Mark 21, but still, it's the Mark 7 just painted gold, still diecast, and still fantastic. I cannot wait to get this guy out here. This is going to be my first Midas armor. I know they've already done two, but I started collecting a little bit later in the game, therefore, I was never able to pick up any of the previous Midas releases. So, as I said, this will be my personal first experience with a chrome gold painted Iron Man Mark 7. Now I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is of course in the description below. They do have him in stock and ready to ship right now and they do have 12 month installment plans available if you're a fan of paying off your figures over time. They also will be having a 5% off site wide promo leading up to Christmas. Stay tuned to their socials. Links are down below. Also while you are down there why not hit that subscribe and bell notification notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Also check out the join button for Justin's Collection Plus to get early access to some videos as well as a 5% off code for ToysWonderland.com. What we are going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Midas himself. We do have a wireframe style image of Midas on the front, but done in a multi-tone gold color combination. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a bunch of different styles and colors of gold here. We do have a rose style gold, more of a lighter champagne, and also more of a deeper gold up here on the front. Multiple different shades, it looks fantastic. Now with this being one of the newer style Iron Man diecast figures, we do have the black foam housing the figure himself, but on the back just some more legal information and more of that rose-colored chrome gold on the box. One of the most striking pieces of box artwork that honestly I think I've ever seen. The gold sets the entire thing off and it looks incredible. But as you can see, really nice and sturdy black foam box on the inside with of course the figure himself housed within. And let me just say, first impressions of that gold in person Oh my goodness, this thing looks like a million bucks, and he feels it too. I just love the heft and weight of the diecast Mark 7. This guy looks absolutely stunning, but more on him a little bit later in the video. Now you can see he does have a few hands on the top here, but of course there is an under tray with even more goodness down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of this stuff laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Midas. Now as you can see, he comes with a similar array of accessories to the regular Mark 7, but he doesn't come with everything. He's of course missing the battle damage pieces and of course the pod mode accessories. Technically, the figure can do the pod mode. If you have the normal Mark 7, you can take those pieces and put it on your Midas. It would look a little bit weird because those pieces would be, of course, red, but there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Now let's take a look at the display base first. It's that classic Hot Toy style DX display base. It works quite nicely because this is a one-off style figure. It's a special edition, a 20th anniversary figure. If this was a regular figure in a normal line, I would probably be bashing this display base, but for this particular release, I think it works quite nicely. A gold shiny foil print on the top here with an arc reactor, Iron Man 3 and Mark 21 on the front. Unfortunately, that's just a sticker. This, in my opinion, is a huge missed opportunity for going with a nice die-cast chrome metal nameplate there. They could have done a beautiful gold chrome, they didn't do it, and that's rather unfortunate. Now, of course, to have him in mid-air, you do have the dynamic flight pole. This is that one with the extra support for the crotch there, because, of course, the Mark 7 die-cast is significantly weighty. Now, of course, you do have a couple of hands. He comes wearing the fists out of the box, but you can see these are the articulated ones 
and they look great. I love this rose gold on the back of the hand here. That's of course peppered throughout the entire figure. You'll see that a little bit more in just a second, but the gold is of course really darn shiny and it looks fantastic. Now you can see a bunch of other bits and pieces. These are of course the missile pod attachments, silver, gold, and of course the missiles on the inside there. I do love the way they look. They're gold as well. There's just pretty much gold throughout the entire thing. You do still have the articulation point on the flaps. You will see these on the figure a little bit later in the video. Now here we have our first chrome style piece. This is a coppery kind of chrome or technically even rose gold. It almost matches what you see on the back of the hand plate there, but it's just a hell of a lot shinier. You can of course see the missiles on the inside there. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Now we do have the missile pod sections for the wrist mounted missiles. These also have some chrome sections on the back, but this time they're just chrome gold. I love the fact that it's not just a regular gold figure. There are a bunch of different shades throughout the entire thing, and not just shades, but also finishes. You have this gold, you have it in chrome and satin, and then the same thing for the copper style paint as well, chrome and satin. It's a really nice touch, and I love how they've interspliced all of the different colors throughout the entire thing. Now, what we are going to do next is, of course, get the Midas himself out here and take... A closer look. And here we have him, the Mark 21, standing straight up and down the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, initially, I wasn't all that excited about the prospect of getting a die-cast Midas figure. I never owned either of the originals. I really liked the look of them, the gold was fantastic, but there was just something about it that didn't quite connect with me as a collector. Now fast forward to today, having this guy in hand? I was blown away. As soon as I opened that clam tray, oh my goodness, I was awestruck by that gold. It has a bit of an ethereal look. I can't really put my finger on how to describe it. When you get yours, you'll know what I'm talking about. It kind of transcends the usual die-cast Iron Man figures because this finish is so unbelievably shiny and unbelievably gold that it just looks absolutely stunning in person. As I said, when you get yours in hand, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. What we are gonna do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal and I have to say, I am loving the way this guy looks. Initially, as I said, I wasn't really all that sure on how I would like the Mark 7 in gold chrome. But it's not just gold chrome, there are so many different finishes on here, and it works perfectly. There's a nice balance between the vac metal chrome of, of course, the chest plate, the side panels, and the rocket launchers, as well as these thigh plates in a vac metal rose gold that it sets off the satin parts a treat. I am loving how all of these various different colors are interspliced, including some sort of silver and also some gunmetal up here. But honestly, it works as one cohesive thing very, very nicely. I know the previous two Midas figures have looked really, really good as well, and they've been sort of similar to this, if not slightly different, but I've never owned those two versions. This is my very first Midas, and I love the way he looks. Now, unfortunately, one thing that I don't love is this scuff right up here on the faceplate. I contacted Toys Wonderland. They will be sending me a new faceplate out. Now, someone said in my Mando video, Hey, Justin, we wouldn't get that level of service. Well, keen-eyed commenter, if you'd care to do some research on Toys Wonderland's after-sale service, Yes, you do actually get that level of service. Just go to the website and you can find out more. But yes, they do offer replacement parts in the Hot Toys 30-day warranty window. You basically send the part back to Toys Wonderland, they take it to Secret Base, and they'll get you a replacement part. They will cover shipping to you and also from you. Now, the cool thing about the Midas is, or pretty much the Mark 7, is the fact that pretty much years after you first purchase him, you'll be probably finding new bits and pieces that can move on the figure. New panels and plates and even these little thruster sections that can open down on the feet. 
It's a cool thing in terms of the engineering that Hot Toys puts into die-cast Iron Man figures. They go all out. These are pretty much their pièce de résistance in terms of the levels of engineering they can jam into a figure. There are thousands and thousands of teeny tiny moving parts that go into these figures that honestly you wouldn't really know about unless you did some research or thoroughly studied the instructions. Even this chest plate can come off. There's no reason for it to do so, aside from just to show you that they can get it done. And I love that. It's a really nice touch for an already absolutely stunning die-cast figure. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the Midas and the Mark VII, as you can see, they're identical. They're pretty much exactly the same. There were some rumblings. People were saying that the shoulders have been changed ever so slightly. Honestly, I don't see it. I don't know if I'm just not looking hard enough, but I've compared them side by side and they look pretty much exactly the same. Let me know what I'm missing down in the comments below because as I said to me, they look identical. But that's not a bad thing. The Mark VII was already fantastic. He's big, he's chunky, he's beefy. I really like the way he looks and the way he feels in hand. And pretty much all of that good stuff can be automatically copied and pasted onto the Midas, except now it's gold chrome, which honestly catches the eye even more so than the original Mark VII. I love the original. It's from the movie, it's accurate, and I love how it looks. But the Midas, as a thing in hand in front of me right now, is pretty much drawing my eye more so than the original. Just going over articulation on Midas. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Also, there are about three million moving pieces on this guy, so if I miss something, do let me know down in the comments below. Now, starting off with the head sculpt itself, there's one ball joint in the head, then one in the neck, and as you can see, fairly decent range of motion exactly like the regular die-cast Mark VII. Now the arms themselves, due to the nature of the shoulder pads, I would suggest pulling them out first and then going up. Same thing with going forward, then you can simply use them to close the gap. You do have a swivel at the upper bicep, a butterfly joint which comes out a significant range, and also a joint that can be pulled out to get it to go even further. You do of course have a double bend at the elbow, and a regular die-cast Iron Man style joint for the wrist itself. Now the torso has about that much range of motion, unless you start extending it out, then it goes just a little bit further, forward, back, side to side, and swivel as well. Of course, do make sure to collapse that up to hide any unsightly seams. The legs do go forward to about there, unless you start moving some of these flaps. I suggest actually moving them out first and then moving the legs. You don't want to use the legs themselves to push them out, otherwise you definitely will scratch this gold paint. The legs can go forward to about there, and they can go out to about there. You can, of course, pull them down to get them to go even further forward and out as well. It's a multi-stage joint so it can go down a few clicks but do make sure to push it back up when you're done with it. Swivel at that joint up there as well. You do also have a swivel at the thigh but it's relatively hard to access just due to the nature of how all of this armor does work together. Double bend there at the knee and of course a regular die-cast Iron Man style joint for the foot itself. It does appear like it can be pulled down just like we've seen with some of the other figures but do be careful mine appears to be a little bit stuck and finally for the feet you do have die cast iron man toe articulation moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about midas the first annoying thing at least for me you may very well love this display base but I don't. I don't think it works for him. Yes, I know it's a one-off, therefore it can be a little bit bigger, but I would have preferred a hexagonal style display base and a nice vac metal chrome gold Mark 21 nameplate for the front, but alas, they didn't do it. The second annoying thing isn't the inclusion of the vac metal gold. I love the way this looks, it's the fact that there's not more of it. I think that they could have killed it, just added in to little bits and pieces and sections that you kind of otherwise would overlook, just to highlight those sections a little bit more and draw the eye. I would have loved for the faceplate to have been a nice chrome finish as well. I think that would have looked absolutely gorgeous. The third annoying thing, and hopefully it's exclusive to me, 
see that my Midas has a bunch of scratches on his faceplate down here on this sort of diaper section. There are little scuffs and nicks and they don't just rub away, those are actually embedded in the paint. Far less than ideal, especially for a rather pricey boy such as Midas. The first cool thing about Midas, and I know you can say it, it's a cop out, but it's the paint. This guy looks beautiful. I know I was just complaining about scuffs, but putting all that stuff aside, the way he looks in hand with this super shiny, beautiful finish, I'm in love. This guy I originally was gonna keep in the box and not actually put on display until we move and have a bigger room. But now, having seen him, honestly, I might have to find a place. The second cool thing is the inclusion of the swap out pieces. Technically, they didn't really have to do this. I know people would have been frustrated, he wouldn't have included pretty much anything, but that's kind of par for the course with an exclusive figure such as Midas. He didn't need to come with weapons because the exclusive is the figure himself, so I'm very glad that Hot Toys decided, no, we're gonna throw in these pieces because of course, it's the Diecast Mark VII and these will look absolutely awesome in a gold finish. The third cool thing is that after all these years, we are getting a house party protocol Diecast Iron Man 3 figure. I never thought I'd be saying those words, but here he is in 2020. Does that mean we'll be getting even more House Party Protocol figures? Maybe they'll finish off the line? Honestly, I don't think so, but it'd be really nice to see. Maybe just some of those key armors such as Silver Centurion, Heartbreaker. I don't know, it would be awesome for them to do it, but will they? That's the bigger question. Just wrapping up on the Diecast Midas figure. Now on paper, this guy kind of doesn't work for me personally. It's a Mark VII, and yes, I really do like the Mark VII, but only in the original colors, at least so I thought. Fast forward to today, opening up this guy on camera for the very first time, I fell in love. I love this gold finish, and I haven't really been known to love a bunch of gold things. I much prefer silver colored things, bit of a weird thing to say, but still it's true. Honestly, I like the look of the Mark VII with the silver chrome, but there's something about the finish on this guy that just works. I love the satin gold, the rose gold, the vac metal pieces, it just pops, especially under these harsh lights. When I pop him in the cabinet, I reckon he's gonna look absolutely beautiful. And of course, it's all based on the Diecast Mark VII. We love the Diecast Mark VII. He's hefty, he's got a really nice level of engineering, a bunch of swap out pieces, and the paint finish on the original pretty much set the bar, in my personal opinion, for future diecast figures. He was absolutely gorgeous, and so too is this guy right here. Paint defects aside, I still would absolutely recommend picking him up if you're either an Iron Man 3 collector, or you just love diecast Iron Man figures because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Now, I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, in the description below. They do have 12-month installment plans now available if you're a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.